Well, greetings, my beloved clients and friends. I know it's been a few weeks since I did my last video, and I'll tell you why I haven't really done a video. It's because um, there's not something that I, th I think I could say with a lot of conviction. And I want I wanna generally have a good probability of being right with what I say on these videos because I mean they're recorded and um, you know I hope they generally will age well and and so I was like man I don't I I'm just don't have a lot of conviction either way right now about being super bullish or optimistic or super bearish or pessimistic and I could make a good case on either side um, for why I should be one or the other, you know, an equally good case, I would, I would think for causes to, to be optimistic and causes to be pessimistic. And so I want to talk about some of that. And I was talking to Charles about it in the office and I was like, man, well, I haven't done a video in a while. And he goes, and I told him why. And he goes, well, just say that, tell, 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 tell why. And and, and your uncertainty and what we're doing it as as a result and so I, I will at the end of this I'll say well what do you do in a time when you don't have a strong conviction either way so a couple of, of the reasons that that we we don't have a strong conviction um, is like for example interest rates have gone up a lot uh, Powell raised the short-term rates up uh, five and a quarter percent over the last year or so. The last two times he's met, he's chosen to pause and, and not raise further. And so that high interest rates t tend to not be good for the market. And uh, it, it presents a, an alternative, a compelling alternative and the higher the rates get, the more compelling that our alternative gets and but you know as he gets closer to wrapping up this tightening cycle that's a positive sign you know what I mean so it's bad that he's tightened I mean for the market it's bad that he's tightened but it's a positive when he stops tightening you know so which which side should we go for that we should be concerned how much he's tightened or should we be optimistic that he's almost done right and and uh the the tenure which he doesn't control the tenure treasury rate went up quite a bit from from uh the end of march until the end of october and it was right around five percent it was like 4.997 it got to end of October and we're concerned about that so when rates get us again if rates get high it's bad for the market but if they've if it becomes an inflection point meaning it's gotten high and it's done being high and it's gonna go the other way that's positive so should we concern that it's high or should we be optimistic that maybe it's hit its inflection point because in the last couple of weeks since it uh, almost breached 5%, it's down like over a half a percent. So, and, and that's the case. There's, there's two things like people, people generally think, well, if there's, if there's bad news, that's bad. And there's good news, there's, that's good which can be true, but um, the first derivative of that is, but what direction is it going, right? Is it not only, is it, so is it not so much that it's bad, but it could be that it's getting worse. It could be good, but getting worse, and that's not good. Or it could be bad, but getting better, and that's actually good. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's, there is no standard, truism that works in all cases 
And so throughout this year, uh, obviously in 2022 was a, a, a big market pullback. And since the beginning of the year, for the first seven months, January through July, we had a really, really nice, healthy bounce. Uh, not in the whole market, but in our portfolio in particular, um, parts of the market did bounce quite a bit and we participated in that to a great degree. So first seven months through July was like really good, around 30%. And then August, September, October, we started giving some of that back. And so it's like, do I lock in these gains so I don't give up more by the end of the year? Or do I just let the market do its thing? You know what I mean? And and you, you could say, yeah, I'm a, I'm a long-term buy and hold investor, which I generally am. And you know that strategy is right until it's not. I've had cases where I've held on to a stock and I held on too long. Uh, I've also had cases that I've thought about selling a stock, but I held on and then it continued to go up. So is holding on always right? I've experienced, you know, yes and no. And then I've had a case where I've had a winner and I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and lock in these gains and I sold it. And it turned out to be a good decision because from there, you know, it, it gave back. But I've also had the the uh, experience that I sold something only to see it go up more. And you could say, you know, there's a truism that says, let your winners ride. And there's also a truism that says, you never go broke taking a profit. So which one's right? You know what I mean? And, and, and they're both right in their time. Um, same thing for a stock that's gone down. If it's come down, do you sell it to avoid future losses? I've done that before and been glad I did because it did keep going down. I've also done it before, sold it, you know, at a loss, and then it shortly after recovered and, and started going back up. So, so I've been right selling, I've been wrong selling, and I've been right holding and I've been wrong holding, you know what I mean? So uh, it, it's tough. It's, it's tough to know what you can do and you can just, you know, I've been doing it long enough to hopefully trust my gut and my experience and and in general obviously not always but hopefully more often than not we make the right decision and and uh but but it's a tough market right now and um you know the country's in a lot of debt is that going to put a stranglehold on on the our country and our economy or are we going to be able to grow our way out of it because you know, there's amazing things happening in the world of technology, in particular around AI, and and it, and it, I mean, on a daily basis, that um, there are new developments in that. Um, and so, is that going to be our next major growth engine, like the invention of electricity, or cars, or freeways, or airplanes, or uh, the telephone? computers, the internet, you know, smartphones. Is that going to be the next one? It seems like it. Um, but is our, uh, our government going to regulate ourselves into second place? Because right now it seems like we're in the lead and the government's been talking about wanting to regulate it. Uh, so there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of things that could potentially go phenomenally right at the same time, there's a lot of things that can go pretty wrong, you know? And so it's hard to have conviction one way or another because um, the things I see, not only in the short term, but even in the long term is, um, there's this guy named Ray Dalio, who's very highly respected and he kind of is making a case that the, China, the, the U.S. is in the latter innings of their of their reign on top. You know what I mean? And and China is the next big one. Is he right or is he wrong? I have some opinions on on 
on that and I'm doing more research on that. As a matter of fact, we're planning a trip to China. To, I want to see it firsthand. I want to put boots on the ground and see firsthand is, is China a big threat or are they the next Japan, which seemed that they were threatening in the 80s and then fizzled out. So I think I'll do a video just about that. But, but what do we do in a situation where, you know, I don't have conviction either way. I don't have anything I want to say to you emphatically that I think I'm right. And here's, here's our conclusion. How do you manage the portfolio that way? And here's what we're doing. We're, um, we're bringing our exposure close to 50% equities. Um. So we're, we're trying to get close to half exposed to the stock market and, and half of it uh, more you know, risk-free type of stuff. And by doing that, because we're not sure, we don't want to be all in because it could go the other way. And we don't want to be all out because there's a lot of good reasons why it could keep going up. So... Our strategy would be to be close to 50% equities at this time. Um, that way, if it does go up, we're happy because half of the portfolio participated. In it. And if it goes down, we're happy because uh, we protected half of the portfolio. And uh, one of the other side benefits of rates going up is that that money that we're parking outside of the market Right now, it's making about close to five and a half percent. So, um, I feel pretty good about that. That hey, half the portfolio is real safe, getting us a close to five and a half percent in short-term T bills, and the other half is exposed to what I believe are good companies. Because we don't just buy the whole market; we buy a handful of companies that we think. Um, are, are well positioned relative to the market as a whole. So that if I have a neutral 50-50 view on the stock market as a whole, maybe some of these companies I have a 60% optimistic view. You know what I mean? And so we're trying to put the probabilities in our favor. And I kind of, you could say I borrowed this strategy from Charlie Brown. They asked him, you know, hey Charlie, what do you do to, to be so happy all the time? He says, well, I bought a place on the lake and I got myself a boat. And he said, that way, when it's a sunny day, I'm happy because I could get to go out and take out my boat on the lake. And when it's a rainy day, I'm happy because the lake is filling up. So I'm happy either way. And that's kind of the approach we're taking with that 50-50 allocation. We're kind of in the middle of the field on the 50-yard line. And if we need to pull back, we can. If we need to pull back farther, we can. And if we need to press forward, we can. You know, that short-term money that's making us about 5.5% is very liquid. So we could deploy that if we have to. The stocks are also liquid that if we need to pull back further, we can, but I think that's, I feel like uh, again, we were talking in the office that hey, it's a tough time to be managing other people's money right now. You know, they're, they're important money. And I feel that the approach that we're taking, I feel comfortable that it's uh you know, well thought out and prudent and probably the best we could do in a situation like this. So if you have any comments, feel free to reach out to us, drop us a note in the comments. And I heard someone say, when you hit that subscribe button, an angel gets their wings. So feel free to subscribe to us. All right, have a great day.